Hey, hello everybody. This is State Representative Lou Evangelitis. I was thinking it might be fun if you guys came with me on a tour of the State House today. It's going to be pretty quiet in Boston. So I thought many of you who haven't been able to come in to take a tour with me might be interested in to see what it's like up at the State House. So what we're going to do is get going. And uh, hopefully if any of you would like to come have a tour after we get done today, feel free to contact my office. So it's a beautiful day to head into Boston. So I say, let's go. Well, here we are, heading on to 290 on the way to the State House in Boston. And uh, this is a regular part of my life, this drive into Boston. I will say this, when I first got elected, I remember the very first day I, I went to State House. Now, I lived in Boston for many years, and I was an assistant DA in Boston for four years. And um, I remember thinking, well, actually, I was assistant DA for two years here in Boston, but I lived in the city for four years. And I remember always thinking how nice it was to get out of that Boston traffic. And then when I got elected, the first day I drove in, it took me about two hours. And I remember thinking, what have I done? But um, for the most part, we don't go in during the early rush hour part of the day. Many times we come home later part of the day. But the because so many of the legislators come from Western Massachusetts, most of our sessions don't start till 11 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes we have meetings and hearings starting before then. But generally, we're not driving in at the 8, 9 o'clock time when people are really, the rush hour traffic is really heavy. So that gives us a little bit of advantage and we try to utilize that time at home. I have access to my email account at home and obviously with my cell phone and my home phone, I can get a lot of work done before I even get in the car and head down to Boston. So once you um, once you get on the pike and you know, you're know heading on the uh, way to Boston, it's more or less just what are you gonna do during that usually hour to hour and a half time. And as anybody that goes to Boston knows, you never know when you're getting in the car what you're looking at for traffic because there's no rhyme or reason to it and there are days where it's just dead stopped anywhere other days you drive straight through so you just have to kind of give yourself enough time and prepare for the unexpected which is the expected <clears throat> so uh that's pretty much you know the, the way the road the ride goes in um and you just kind of depends on what i got going on how I handle the ride in. Some days, hey, if the Red Sox are on a roll and the path is doing great, you want to listen to sports radio. There are days when you love to listen to, uh, you know, talk radio and, and politics and things like that. There are times like this when we're kind of in the middle of an election where almost you get too much politics, it seems like. Uh, and I listen to a lot of music, too, on the road. I'm a, I know uh, we've talked about it, but many of my friends know I'm a, I'm a real... Uh, music fan. I go to concerts, I've probably been to two, three hundred concerts in my life, have hundreds and hundreds of CDs and my kids even gave me an iPod for Father's Day and I've loaded that up with about 5,000 of the best songs you'll ever hear in your life and I mean everything from classical to jazz to classic rock, folk, bluegrass, country, you name it. Um, I'm listening to Rhonda Vincent right now, she's a great bluegrass artist and you know yesterday I was listening to Mozart so um, and I'm a big Allman Brothers fan, so take it from there. But the point is that I think like all of us, you take your ride in and depending on your mood and, and what you got going on, a lot of times I, I make phone calls in the car because that's my time of day to kind of catch up with people and get back to them. So, okay, yeah, absolutely. Well, look, I'm more than happy to look into that for you and you can count on me getting back to you shortly on that, okay? Absolutely, my pleasure. Okay, talk to you later, bye-bye. Oh, as I mentioned, um, one of the big things I try to do when I'm driving to and from the state house is kind of utilize the time to be productive. So at some point, I always have a list of phone calls that I have to make during the day and just kind of scratch them off as I go and try to get that done. People are waiting to hear back from you. And I have a staff in Boston, which we'll have a chance to meet later. <clears throat> and we're always communicating back and forth all day, whether I'm at the state house or not. We probably talk five times a day just to go over what the emails are, who's called, what we can do, and updating each situation. So that's a big part of what I have to do. And uh, unfortunately, I'm probably gonna even have to make another call or two as we head in right now. 
this part here, when we get to the end of the turnpike extension, is where the big dig starts. And as you can see in a minute, we're going to enter the big dig under the uh, tunnel. And the only thing positively I can say about the $14.5 billion that the taxpayers and the folks in, in, uh, in my district have had to pay for this tunnel is most of us never use it. And that's why I'm so just disgusted at the over costs, overruns, and now the additional expenses to come with this tunnel. But the one positive thing I get out of this tunnel is by taking this way into work, saves me about three minutes every day. So for 14.5 billion, at least people can know that their state rep can save three minutes coming into work in the morning. But other than that, I can't think of a lot of good things about this tunnel that was anything close to worth what we paid for it. So here we go, we're heading into the northern way of the tunnel now, heading north towards the Zakem Bridge. And uh, now we're dropping down into the depths of the big dig. And we will come out in the backside towards Fanel Hall and the Haymarket. And that's where I save my time. So this is the back end where Fanel Hall is. That's the uh, Haymarket right there. Faneuil Hall over there, Government Center. This is the uh, north end of Boston. Very nice area, only the restaurants are three times as expensive as those on Shrewsbury Street in Worcester for the same food, but if you like the, uh, the ambiance of coming to the north end, that's where it is. And because we got rid of the, the overpass and we built the tunnel, you can now walk right across the uh, Rose Kennedy Greenway here, which is right in front of us. Another taxpayer funded project for those of us in Central Mass that really get such benefit out of this. Okay, we are, this is the back of the stairs. There's the dome right there. You can just see through the tree. And as legislators, we're provided a parking spot. We have actually in the building itself is where the women legislators and the senior legislators park, and those of us who are more recent elected park in the uh, McCormick building. And we have our security people to make sure that we're legit. And we get our part, we get a designated parking spot here, and then we walk across to the state house. So, and when we get out late night sessions, this place is all filled with like legislators walking around at like midnight, just kind of getting out of here. It's kind of a fun time. Here's my spot over here. Thankfully there's no one parked in it today. That's always a good sign. 